Good morning, pre AP students. So today we're going to look at your notes for 3-10, simplifying by distributive property and combining like terms. Well, you can only combine like terms that have the same variable. And we talked about that a variable means uh, a letter that represents a number. So if you look at the example here, um, we have two different variables, the letter A and the letter C. And notice that any number with a variable next to it with the letter A is circled and any variable um, with a number next to it with the letter C is with a square. So A is circled, C variables are squared here. So we want to combine like terms. If they are the same variable, we can combine like terms. So here I have 8A and I have negative 2a. And remember, whatever sign is in front of the number, that's the sign that we keep with that number. So 8a minus 2a is 6a. And then 6c, positive 6c, and positive 5c is 11c. So 6a plus 11c. And this is our simplified version. You cannot combine these two because the variables are different. You can only combine them when the variables are the same. So let's look at some examples. Example number one, 10x minus 6y plus 5x. I see two different variables. I see an x and a y. So looking at these variables, I want to combine my x's and I'm going to put a box around my x's keeping the sign in front, and I'm going to put a circle around my y's. So I can combine 10 and 5x to be 15x. I have nothing to combine with the y, so I'm just going to rewrite minus 6y. And remember, we keep the sign in front because the subtraction also means negative. So this is your answer. Let's look at the second example. I have two different variables here as well, y and w. So I want to combine my y variables, keeping the sign in front, and combine my w variables, keeping the sign in front as well. So 3y minus 9y is negative 6y plus 5 and 2, 7, w. So let's look at the distributive property. This is what we learned in the last video. The distributive property tells me that if a number is in front of the parenthesis, which means multiplication, I can distribute that number to everything inside the parenthesis and using the operation multiplication. So let's look at this example. The eight is in front of the parenthesis. And so I can multiply eight by everything inside, which is eight times A and eight times C keeping the sign in the middle. Now what does this look like using the box method? So the 8 is on the outside and then the parenthesis is up top. So 8 times A, which is 8A, 8 times C, which is 8C. So the answer is 8A plus 8C. You don't have to use the box method if you're good at just the distributing with the arrows. Either one, you'll get the right answer. So let's look at some more examples. Let's look at number three and four, and I will leave you to do five and six by yourself. So three, the three is on the outside of the parenthesis, so I can distribute the three to everything inside of the parenthesis. Three times x is three x, keeping the sign in the middle of the parenthesis, minus three times y, three y, plus two x. So I want to compare, I want to combine my like variables, like terms. So I have an X and an X keeping the sign in front, and then I have a Y all by itself. So if I combine my X's, 3 plus 2 is 5X minus 3Y, bringing down the 3Y because I have nothing to combine with it. So my answer is 5X minus 3Y. So let's look at the next one, number 4. I want to distribute the 3 into everything in the parenthesis. 3 times 2 is 6, and I want to keep the x. 3 times 4 is 12, keeping the sign in the middle. So this is simplified as far as it can go, because I only have one variable. 
and one number. Five and six, I'm going to leave you to do on your own. Let's look at the back. So if the problem has variables with no equal sign, then you only simplify. If the problem has an equal sign in it, you're going to solve. So I'll do a problem with both, um, but it seems like they all have equal signs in them. So I'm going, I'm going to solve number seven for you and number eight. And I think you can do the rest on your own. So I start with my parentheses. I'm going to distribute a seven to everything in the parentheses. Seven times n is seven n, keeping the sign in the middle. Seven times one is seven. And then rewriting everything else, minus four n equals four. Well, before I can solve for n, I have to combine like terms. So I have a seven n and a minus 4n. 7 minus 4 is 3n. And then I'm going to rewrite plus 7 equals 4. And from here, it's just balancing equations. And we know how to do that. I'm trying to get rid of my addition and subtraction first, and then my multiplication and division. So I'm going to get rid of 7 by doing the inverse operation or opposite, which is opposite of positive is negative. And what I do on one side, I have to do to the other side. So this creates a zero pair. I'm going to write what is left on this side of the equal sign. 3n equals 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So now I can focus on my multiplication and division. And to undo a multiplication sentence, I must divide. And what I do on one side, I do to the other. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times n is just n. Negative 3 divided by 3, which is a positive, or negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. So the answer is negative 1. And remember, you can always go back in and check your answer. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4. All right, so let's look at number 8, last problem. Well, let's look at number 10. Number 8 is kind of easy. Number 10, I have two parentheses, so I can distribute two times. 2 times x is 2x. Keep the sign in the middle. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times 1 is 3. But you have a sign thing. You have negative 3 times negative 1, which is a positive. So this is going to change to positive 3. Because the sign in the front always means something. You can't keep the sign in the middle if you're multiplying by a negative and a negative. Because a negative and a negative is a positive. But if this was a positive and this was a negative, then we would keep the negative. And then I'm just going to rewrite everything else. So now, to simplify, I have to combine like terms. So I see 2x and minus 3x, which is a negative x. And then I have negative 6 and positive 3, which is negative 3. And that equals negative 5. So now, I can solve for x because I have an equal sign. So I want to get rid of the addition and subtraction first. I have subtraction on the same side with the x. So I'm going to add 3. And what I do on one side, I do to the other side. So negative x equals negative 2. And when x is negative, I can change it to positive, but which, which basically I'm doing the opposite sign. And what I do on one side, I do to the other side. So because this is negative and I change the sign here, I have to change the sign on this side as well. So x is actually equal to positive 2. Now let me give you a, a different example of that. If I had negative x and I had positive 3, and I never want x to be negative. So if I change the sign on x, I would have to change the sign on 3. And 3 would be now negative, just to give you an example. But you can discard that as far as the answers to your problems. All right, I hope this helps. Thank you. See you next video.